Hey everybody, Lori Schmidlin here for Paper Tray Ink. I'm excited to share with you today the tarnished foil technique for this year's 2017 Stamp Affair Anniversary Celebration. And this is the 10th anniversary, which is aluminum and tin. I hope you enjoy. To get started, you'll need some foil. I just want to take a second to talk about the different kinds. This, um, there are several different kinds available on the market today. This is a craft uh, sheet, and I think this is from Silhouette. This is a really heavy duty sheet. You can see that this is a little bit thicker. This is a more of a lightweight, still thicker than aluminum foil. But this is also um, something that I got in my stash. This is avail available in any craft store. And if you don't have any of these aluminum or uh, tin craft sheets, you can use heavy duty aluminum foil. This is something that you can just pick up at the supermarket. I just cut uh, a piece, folded it into fours, and you're gonna wanna do that because it's just too thin otherwise and it will tear as you, um, as you move on to the next step. But for today's purpose, I'm gonna use this large heavyweight sheet. To start, we're going to want to grunge up this shiny, pretty foil sheet. And to do that, we're going to take some permanent black ink. And this, I've got a couple kinds here. There's this Ranger Archival ink, it's permanent, waterproof, or your black stays on. Um, now the important thing is that you don't want it too juicy. So if you've got a pad that's been around for a while that isn't that juicy, that's a great one to use, the direct to paper type technique where you can actually just run your pad over the sheet. This one is definitely needs to be re-inked, but this is perfect for this kind of technique. And um, if you have a pad that's juicier, like this one, you can uh, just wad up a piece of paper, paper towel like this, and you can create your own disposable dauber. Just pick up some of the ink, and you can wipe it on. And the good thing about this is before the ink is really set, you can actually wipe some of it off if you feel like you got too much on there. So I'm just going to swipe some ink on both directions. to get. We want it to give it a tarnished old look. So you can, there we have it. You can see here's the shiny side, and there's the inked up side. The next step is we're going to want to emboss our aluminum sheet here. I'm going to be using the Paper Tray Inks Wood Grain Stencil. This is a steel stencil, so it works well for embossing as well. But you can use any embossing folder or any other tool you have to emboss this. I'm going to run it through my embossing, my die cut machine to <clears throat> to get a nice textured um, embossed sheet. And here's the shiny side, and again, here's the inked up side. Okay, the next step, we're going to add some embossing powder. We're gonna start with our copper. I'm gonna take our embossing pad. You can, again, do this two ways. Direct to foil, or get a clean paper towel, wad it up, and use it like a sponge to dab it into place. To start with, I'm gonna go ahead and use my, my pad directly to the foil. One tip though, leave as you wanna leave as some silver to peek through. The first time I did this technique, I got a little overexcited, covered almost the whole thing, thinking that I can just sand it off later. So it didn't work very well. So make sure you can start with just a little bit. You can always go back and add more. So I'm just gonna to touch my ink pad in a few places. And you're gonna see some lines from the the pad, don't worry about that because in this next step I'm gonna show you how to correct that. So you can definitely see the lines. And also I got, I got a little too much right there. I, I wanna leave some more, more silver peeking through. So just take your finger and you can soften those edges from the lines from the ink pad, as well as wipe off any embossing powder that you just, you felt like maybe got too much on there. Okay, I'm gonna heat set this now. One tip, this is metal. It gets very hot when you when you use your heat tool. The whole thing will get hot. So make sure you put this on a heat resistant surface and 
go ahead and heat set your embossing powder and then let it cool before you try to pick it up. Okay, now we have our copper embossed. Now it's time to add in some gold. I usually like to start with the copper first because I use a little bit less copper than I do the gold. That's just a personal preference though. You can do these in any order you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the gold, but I'm gonna overlap a little bit, a little bit onto my copper to kind of blend it in a little bit. And again, we have some definite lines, so I'm gonna go in and really soften those up. And I think I'm actually gonna go back and I'm gonna add some more once I get this heat set to even soften those lines up a little bit more. And plus I think it would look good with a little bit more gold. Okay, I've embossed the gold, and I'm going to go ahead and take my paper towel this time, dab it into my watermark pad. I'm gonna soften those lines up a little bit more and add in a little bit more gold. Okay, I'm gonna see what that looks like. I'm gonna just go in and remove a little bit of the gold just so we have a little bit more of that silver peeking through. But overall, I think that's gonna look really good. Soften those lines up nicely. Okay, now I'm gonna heat set this. I've got my gold embossed and you can see it's shiny and pretty. Well, we, we're gonna wanna grunge this up even more. So now that I have everything is heat set and my metal is cooled off. I'm gonna take my ink, my black permanent ink, and I'm gonna use my paper towel from earlier, and I'm gonna rub it, especially on those really pretty shiny places. This is gonna give it, it's gonna add to that tarnished look. Now, while it's still wet, you can rub some of that black ink off if you feel like you got a little too much on there. I really. This also brings out the nice pattern of your embossing, so you can really see that wood grain nicely. Alright, next I cut down my paper. I'm just going to use a strip of this on my card. So I trimmed this to two and three quarters tall by four inches wide. Now if you have any left over, make sure to save it. That stuff is so pretty, you don't want to throw that away. You can use that on a later project. To assemble my card, my finished card, I stenciled the background, the Stencil Basics dots on craft ink on craft cardstock. And I adhered my um, tarnished foil piece. The sentiment is um, the grateful from the Counting My Blessings die set. And those pretty leaves are from the Leaf Silhouettes die set. I just used the open image ones and I die cut them out of Honey Nut, Simply Chartreuse, and Scarlet Jewel. I did emboss the, the lower part of the grateful word in gold. I felt like it tied in some more of the gold as well as brushed the edges with some gold ink. But overall, it's a really fun technique and I hope you get a chance to try it out.